Greetings and welcome to the broadcast. I'm your host, and today we get a chance to look at an old 1960s circa book. How did they, did they survey the Earth? How did they measure the Earth? What did they go through? Well, basically, they got a crew of men and took some transits or theoledites and sent them out to, to take measurements. Items like this right here, optically based, got better and better. The crews got finer and finer, more skilled. And basically what they did, they took their measurements, took their readings, tried to interpret them somehow with the globe Earth, the curvature of the Earth, get a measurement, and, and do the best they could. Now, sometimes there was too much either mineralization or magnetic in the soil, and they had to use what we called a solar compass, like this guy here. You stuck this thing over your shoulder. Somehow you held a card down there. You tried to see here where the sun was looking. Let's look a little closer. See where the sun is on these things? These, you had to try to somehow calculate this with the earth and get this thing out. Let's look a little bit closer. A guy goes out. He holds a card up at the end of this thing on the sun because there's too much magnet in the soil, gets it the very best he can. I want to read to you uh, what some of the certifications were and some of the things about the solar compass back then. It says, the solar compass has the ability to measure horizontal angles like a transit. The solar compass was such an important invention that within a few years, it was required by law to be used on the surveys of public lands. And that was back in about 1850. Well, of course, there were lots of obstacles. The sun came up, number one, in a different place each day. Not a big difference. If you could, Say you had 360 men. You sent one out each day. The sun's different each day. You've got the declination, the movement of the magnetic north. In fact, from the time this book was published till now, the magnetic north has moved about two degrees, about two, uh, which is showing you right there that they had it tough. They really did. Right here you can see, you know, trying to do whether it's 400 square miles or 4,000 square miles. As you get to the top of the earth, of course, it, it goes in, it, it kind of like a pie shaped with the tip of a spear. So you have these little right there and right there. You have these two little sawtooth edges that had to be comp uh, compensated for. Trying to measure a township, you can imagine what they went through here. Let's take a look at the earth. See how these things, as you can see, these meridian lines, it, when you get to the top, it's not as wide as the bottom, and that's hard to do. Now, here's the solar look. You look through the solar device here, and this was supposed to really be the cat's meow at one time to help figure this out. However, it's not so very easy to do when you've got all these factors of things moving around on you. Uh, look at some of these other things you can see from this wonderful textbook. Guys had to carry these things out. Did you know that the steel tapes they used had a coefficient of linear expansion to like five or six figures they used just to figure out a few degrees of difference on a 100-foot tape? Well, of course it would make a difference going over the whole Earth. Here's some photography. Now, here's where you get into a little trouble with these photographers. This was a tough one. How do you measure the curvature of the Earth and keep everything just straight? Uh, so here we got a, a little kind of stereographic deal. They get a little bit more advanced like this. Optics get better. And finally, that's not working so good, so you get more sophistication and throw more money out at it. But what a fantastic book. Let's take a look at this thing here. Library of Congress number. Let's get that up here for you at the bottom of the screen. Put that in right. Uh, now, there's the Library of Congress number. You can use that if you just choose to, to look at this book yourself. Now, here's some lines here about the what at that point was believed to be magnetic, kind of a resonance thing. You had to factor this in when there was too much of a magnetic component to the soil. This is very interesting, and it flies in the face of some of the arguments that you hear online on the internet right now about how to really measure the earth. Now, yet another hurdle, what might sometimes be called book learning back then, if you look at this area that has a little yellow highlighting in it, you can't really read it all, but these charts were only updated, for instance, this magnetic declination, like every five years. So now, theoretically, you have 360 people a year going out, each one goes out each day, and you only update these lines on the Earth here at once every five years. Hey, it's very possible there's continually having to go out and do a survey on your land because, you know, let's face it, uh, how, how accurate is the survey that was done on your land? Let's take a, a thought problem here. Here's California. Let's just pretend that it was a 1,000 miles north and south, roughly, but you didn't know that. So you fly over to California, you snap a picture, and you do a whole bunch of surveying, you get the results in, and oh, all of a sudden they release some information that the Earth is really a spherical obloid, like these two uh, examples here. Now these, are, of course, are exaggerated, but then right when you get the spherical obloid down, they say, oh, wait a minute, no, it, down at the Antarctica, it bulges a little bit to what's called a pear-shaped Earth, pear-shaped Earth. So what do you do? 
you go back and look at the amount. There was over a hundred pages of these kind of charts in this book that we looked at. And that included everything. Basically, you go back to a steel tape like this right here. Get you a steel tape. Get the coefficient of linear expansion on that steel, which really is a little bit every degree. And do the best you can. Get back out in the field and change the earth from a round to a spherical obloid. Take another. Now, look at this thing right here. This little special stool they had to use to hold the tape just right. You just can't get enough of these old books, what it was really like, and how they measured the earth. Well, thanks for stopping by. That's the end of the book report. Elsewhere on the McEisencraft site, we do show you how to utilize free Bible study software. And for your information, earth is mentioned over 900 times, 900 times in the Bible, and also some of the sun going across the earth, and a little bit of measurements, a little bit of degrees, sun going back and forth. Also very interesting study as well. Well, take care. Lord bless all of you. And bye for now.